My name is Samesh Singh. I'm a solution architect um, in our solutions group. We have Scott Culbertson with me today. Um, Lutz Seidemann, he's not able to make it. Um, but we're going to talk to you today about accelerating the System Center 2012 Configuration Manager deployment. Um, it is a 200 level session, as stated. Um, probably just want to level set that we're going to talk more about process learnings and IP and how we as Microsoft services can actually accelerate getting Configuration Manager out into your environment. So we're probably not going to touch on terribly deep technical content, um, but we just want to talk through where Configuration Manager is, how it's supporting some strategies, and, um, and what we've learned and what, what we can do to help. Okay, um, so that's really the objectives. Um, what are the focus areas that you should consider, where you should perhaps invest um, from our learnings with early adopter programs? To look at some of the design options um, that exist, that's largely covered in what we call our offering content, and we'll talk about that later on. Um, and to look at the structure of that offering and how it can suit you, um, depending on what your requirements are, and how that offering can actually accelerate your deployment. Um, We've, we've invested quite significantly in that. Uh, we've had quite a few subject matter experts develop that content for us. Um, so we'll talk about that. So introductions, I think we've kind of done that, really. Um, we've got members of our team in the room today, so we'll, we'll be happy to take questions as we go along. Um, but also, afterward, feel free to, to catch up or catch us anyway. Um, Scott's probably going to have a chat about some trends in, in IT and how we see Configuration Manager actually supporting those. Um, we look at vision and scope and how we start off that first phase of, of the project and then look through the actual design strategy and where our offering is really positioned. So I'll hand over to Scott. Sure, thanks. So one more time, so I'm Scott Coverson. I'm a solutions architect as well uh, for, for services. Um, kind of preface this, why we're presenting this stuff is that Microsoft Services has done many, many types of engagements around Config Manager. We've seen a lot of real world activities and components, and so we just want to try to help you guys with this and kind of understand, I mean, as we move through this, like in the trends for IT, you guys are gonna be like, yeah, we've got that, we're doing that, we're having that same issue. So we wanna talk about that. One of the things we'd like to be able to do is allow you guys to be interactive with this, so please feel free to stand up to any one of the mics if you've got a question. This is being recorded, so it'd be very nice to be able to hear the questions. Uh, if, if for some reason you don't, we'll try to repeat the question for it. But ideally, if we get it on the microphones, that would be great. So please feel free to, to, to this is more of an interact, like I say, interactive session for us. I think so, so in the trends in IT, so a couple things really everybody will start seeing demographics are changing. The world's changing for us. How, how we, if we look all the way back from the early days of uh, Windows 95, Windows XP, Windows NT and everything, we're kind of in that world, everything was IT to set all the standards and everything was consumed by what IT defined out there. And it was pretty, it was pretty solid, lockdown infrastructures and everything. The world started changing. Oh, was a little, get a little feedback there. <laughs> so, so the worlds were starting to change as we're going through that process, and in reality, as we're, as, as we're seeing that, it, it really slipped away that, you know, now devices started to get more complex to manage and support. So what is that? So as, as we look at this, we're now moving into many, many different technologies that we've got here. Uh, these technologies all the way from from simple mobile tablet type devices. Now we're communicating, we're tweeting, we're Facebooking. The, uh, we're chatting through our computers now. We're using our computer devices as our technologies and enablers for us to be able to virtually be anywhere. So that starts posing a lot of challenges for us. Uh, and so inside of that, we need to start figuring out how to be more creative with our, with our end users, customers, how, whoever's consuming these type of devices and services. 
So a lot of things, what, what, what has really started driving that? The, probably one of the biggest one is the, the, the explosion of data, right? So we start looking at core, core infrastructure, the knowledge, data that we have, that's, that's the IP of your company. That's, that's, that's what your company is founded on. So as we start making that more and more available, it needs to be consumable. Social computing is becoming very common. How many of you guys sit there and walk around now with your, with your, your Windows phone and, and you're checking your emails, you're, you're chatting, you're blogging, things that you're seeing this week? It's, you know, we are truly becoming tethered to these type of devices. Uh, now with all the enablements on the cloud out there, it's just it's phenomenal. So being able to move through those type of components. And you know, our connectivity is, is, is now, there's a plethora of ways that you can stay connected. How do we start managing that? How are we going to enable that for our users in a, in a good strategic way? Um, I, just, I was just playing with these new Slate devices and everything and, and looking at how a Slate device is my desktop. It now becomes mobile. It's my, it's, my, it's my personal device when I'm on the road. And, and then now I can actually do all my business and phone calls and everything through my Slate device out there. Uh, starting to move that, and, and then from where I have that as my desktop, and then I move to my Windows phone, all my data is still within that. So those type, those type of things are how are we going to manage. So carrying that forward, so a lot of the challenges that we have, if we look at the, there's, there's challenges for the user, and then there's going to be challenges for the IT, so we, we actually even have to look at that. So how many, you guys look at this like, you know, what are our roles? You know, a, a user role, the user personas. The, um, what, the nature of the user, they've become far more educated now, and they also are becoming more cons consuming these devices. As they're doing that, they're wanting to be productive all the time. Uh, they want to have access to the data everywhere. Uh, they want to be able to know that when they do need to access their data, they can access their data, it needs to be secured. Um, and, and these type of things, I, how many of you guys work from the house now? You know, when you're, when you're physically, physically at work, it's nice to be able to go off or you go to the Starbucks or you go to Seattle's Best or wherever you're going. You know, you go to McDonald's, you know, and you can sit down and you can actually be able to support your company wherever you're at. So those type of things are really good. But how do we secure that? How do we make sure that all those components, that it's not, it's trying to envision, well, sure, you can put it up in the cloud, you can put it in your private cloud space up there maybe, maybe, uh, uh, you don't know exactly how you're connecting to these type of components. You know, are you putting that data on that personal local PC, or are you trying to provide that through some kind of cloud service or RDS services or something? So there's a lot of configuration challenges around that. Uh, we really, it, another concept of this is, is the new bring your own device type model, right? So been able to support that. So some of the challenges for you guys is how are we really going to do that? We have to kind of start defining that and kind of making that happen. And the users are coming from just the business perspective. You have to come from the technology perspective, and we have to start figuring out how to blend those two together. The, uh, how to make that happen? Well, you know, configuration managers now with using config managers, that's going to be one of our key enablers out here. Um, and like I say, so managing devices that you don't own. How many of you guys are having the, the, the challenge of uh, whether it's the uh, iOS devices, Android devices, tablets? I mean, this is just, it, this is, it's almost like an outbreak, right? It, but people need this stuff. So we need to help you guys come out and be able to bring a clear message back to the users. If you're going to need to do this, let's try to do this in a secured, protected state. Let's, let's make sure that we're protecting that company data. That, like I said, that data is your company's business. That's what, that's what drives your business. So, and how do we do that deploying on these unmanaged devices? How do we get application services out there? Uh, are we going to try to install those applications to the user's device? Or are we going to try to bring them into some kind of virtualized component? Are we going to try to use our new Windows to Go devices? Are we going to do VDI services? All of these things have to be put into consideration. So as I was kind of pointing out, I'm trying to get us to start understanding, it's a balancing act. It's an act between what can you do for your users, the demand's high, and how are we going to do that from the IT perspective? 
How are we going to keep everything on a level playing field and, and really be able to deliver the services that they need? So that the access to data, I don't know if anybody stopped by our booth and saw, uh, we had one neat little video that's, that really shows uh, how we're doing RDS services for remote apps. Uh, you can literally use any device that you want and you can provide them, as long as you're connected, you can provide them access to those type of devices and it's a completely secured state. Uh, the ability to use Config Manager to drive and deliver that out there. Uh, with now with 2012, that's even going to be far greater. Uh, the ability to manage these components is far easier. So how we take and enable that from them, the users are now, whether we use this as self-service, user shopping cart, self-serve you know, self user using the Config Manager uh, client for, for services, However we want to look at that, users are wanting to be able to just get just-in-time components to their desktops all the time now. So trying to understand that and balancing that, how are you going to do that with, the, with your infrastructure? What's the workloads on that? How are you guys going to actually build and, and, and uh, what I'd say well, it's really is consumeration of that and how to commoditize that as a service to your users? The, um, so. When we do that, that's the business side, that's what the users want. Whether you call that role basing, or you call that um, personas, whatever you want to call it, the user, I, I kind of see that as you guys as IT now, we're not providing a product to a user, we're now providing a service to the user, and it's consumable, and it's, it's selectable. So everything that you're doing in that, we need to just start taking that concept of you as IT providing a service out there and it needs to be consumed from them. Uh, all, the, all these new devices that are gonna come out here. Uh, taking, when we look at Config Manager, we look at, we look at, we look at it as a, um, uh, it's always been socialized as we're managing your device, we're managing your computer, what are you managing? We're now shifting to where you can start managing the user which is really nice. It's, we're becoming more device agnostic. So, uh, so embracing these type of technologies is, is what we like to try to help with. Coming in and actually Samesh will talk about some of the envisioning planning phases and stuff like that here shortly. Uh, but being able to adopt those components uh, uh, and just, just being able to, to figure out when that user clicks on it, you need to be comfortable know that it's going to get there. So all of this comes into what we call now the flexible work style. So if you break this, if you break this into different modules out here, so we really have functional lines that we're serving here, uh, working with the anywhere type connection, working on the road scenario, uh, leveraging components like direct access, uh, taking advantage of server eight that's coming out now, uh, really enables you guys to do this a lot quicker. Uh, understand how to do that. You're bring your own device, working, working from your own device. How do we start enabling users to be able to do that um, and not have the impact on your infrastructure, out, you know, knowing that it's secured? Working from your mobile phone. I mean, phones have just, you know, the last couple of years have just gotten phenomenal. So, and, and making sure so every user, they want, they want their own personality on that device. But, so how do we make sure that they can have that personality, but then when they go to another device, they still have that personality? If, you, if they walk, if you got a kiosk and they walk to that kiosk, they want to be able to find their same data when they go to the next one out there. The, um, having the intelligent infrastructure out here, uh, now with Config Manager, we're really starting to be able to optimize these solutions and bring this all into one solution. Now, they're taking advantage of cloud management. You guys have seen some of the new stuff out here with the cloud that keeps coming more and more. It's, it's not going away. It's, it's just going to keep getting better and better. Um, be able to take advantage. Have you guys looked at any of the stuff around Intune and stuff like that as well? So that's, that's pretty cool stuff that's coming down the pipe as well. It's getting better every day. Uh, and now VDI uh, with, two, uh, with Server 8, it's, it's, it's phenomenal how much better that experience has been. VDI has always been a challenge in the past, when you look at cost of infrastructure, you know, and if you just really start looking at price point, does it make sense to do it? Well, we're, we're finally getting to that point where it does. So, 
So some of the uh, client management scenarios that we look in here, uh, when we look at the flexible application delivery too, being able to, like I said before, we're starting to look at this more as the user, not as the device. So now with AppD, we're really, really able to start taking advantage of using standard policies and everything else. Whether the user is using an application through its VDI service or he's using it as desktop, the user is able to just get it there. And, they, and it's going to be the same when they get it. Uh, optimizing our uh, users roaming from device to device is, is probably using uh, that, that scenario. A lot of people are like, well, you know, a perfect example is, is uh, my wife works as, 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 a, as a nurse at the hospital. Now she comes home and she's able to just remote in from her personal device at the house. She sees the exact same desktop that she sees at work. And then she, you know, it's, it's almost like, well, why do I need to go to work? <laughs> so, that's quite, that's quite, but she has to hand, she has to touch the patients there. She ha we haven't figured out how to do that one yet. But the, uh, but now and also so all the device management is, is with with the unified infrastructure that we have with SACM, we're broadening the reach of manageability of devices. You are not constantly having to have a bunch of different solutions in place. But we're bringing that all into one house, which makes administration much easier for you guys. So. So ideally, yeah, taking advantage of roaming services between application virtualization, our VDI services, the blendings with Citrix, uh, and then with Config Manager really starts becoming a really good solution for you guys. So with that, Samantha, you wanna talk a little bit about Config Manager? Can do. There you go, push hard on that button. Yeah, right. Okay, so. I guess what Scott really was trying to do there is set that context for what Configuration Manager is, is enabling us to do. Um, it has a new, what, well, three major pillars. Um, Scott's talked about user-centric management. And, and one of the key things that we try to, to understand from customers is really, if it is about utility computing and a service-based approach to enabling the user, then what is it that the user needs? And we do that through a persona and a scenario analysis. And it's effectively a business assessment. What does a user need to be successful? And if we start to manage the user in that way and enable them to achieve those objectives, then IT is successful. And the business is successful. So user-centric management is, is certainly a key component. And we talk about that shift from managing a device to managing a user. The infrastructure and its core components, of course, there's always a challenge around being licensed for a product and deploying the product. And how do we reduce the time between those two so that you actually start to get value faster? And how do we effectively allow you to have those, the, the core components that make up those, those services be as modern as possible and, and allow you to go from one version to the next? So being able to modernize that infrastructure at a rapid rate is, is something that we try to, try to espouse. And of course, the product itself. Um, feature, capability, and deployment capability must all be improved. And the auto-deployment capability within software updates is much improved in 2012. Um, the ability for um, configuration, beg your pardon, compliance assessment through DCM is improved as well. So we, we're continually evolving this, and of course, you know, customer feedback is, is vital to this. So the system-centric, user-centric model is, is certainly there to allow a user to move with what they need to where they need it and when they need it. And, and it is pretty important because the, the, the systems management model has really been around for quite a while. We've, we're very used to managing something we can see, something we can touch, which is really the device. But the user, per se, is effectively a mobile asset to the business. So we need to be able to enable them wherever they are. And as we start to move to that model, what we effectively start to do is address their business requirements. And it is kind of repetitive around that, but I think once we as IT, the IT industry, really start to enable business, we become automatically successful. And, and, and I think for, for quite a while it is IT that has been trying to push services to users rather than address what a user really wants. The, 
sorry, just to go back on that, the whole consumerization of IT trend that we're seeing is all about the user. It's all about what the user wants, when they want it, and how they want to consume it. So ultimately, we need to provide those services. So just a really quick rundown um, on Configuration Manager 2012. Um, the client administration side um, is, of course, for very large-scale deployments. It allows you to centralize your, your administration of your entire hierarchy. The primary, the primary site, as you start to scale down that deployment, um, is more suitable, and we tend to see more of those. But of course, your ability to grow that infrastructure is then a bit more limited. And the secondary side is all about extension and scalability within an organization. In, in, in a proof of concept, which I'll talk about later on, um, the single primary is effectively a standalone site. And we can do that through our proof of concept, which, we, which is an outcome effectively of our offering. So I want to preface talking about this slide by saying it is a point in time. When, when we had early adopter engagements with customers, this was around what kind of intellectual property did we have readily available to us to be able to walk customers through deploying Configuration Manager in its early releases. And what we found was that we could really classify them into these three major categories. The easy IP was really around the vision and scoping exercise, the conceptual design, and the installation. And I'll talk about why installation was actually a relatively easy thing to achieve. But as we started to get to the more complex scenarios and more, I guess, ingrained dependencies on other infrastructure components, that's where we started to find that IP wasn't really mature and we had to go looking for it and develop it with our consultants. Now to say that is, is probably remiss around what the product group's really been developing because of course their content has been maturing at the same time and we've been trying to do things in parallel with them. So it really is an effort in concert. A lot of this IP that's been developed is by consultants who have long-standing experience with systems management products, with configuration manager, with SMS, and, and other competitive products in the market as well. So this was really around a journey with customers to be able to develop this IP and to understand what was important for customers. What did customers really want? How did they want it? And how fast did they really want it? So our lessons were really around when you're considering doing this, if you choose to do it by yourself, Understand that as you start to get more complex and you start to scale your implementation, you will perhaps start to hit, I wouldn't say limiting uh, IP development, but you will need to be more methodical and, and, and explore in greater depth those areas that are classified as being difficult. Because what we'll really find is they're scenario-based. So we, what we try to do is ensure that our consultants who have the breadth of knowledge are able to actually bring that, that experience to the table. So the easy category was really around what is easy, right? And it's easy is relative to the, to the project itself. If it is a multiple hundred thousand client environment, well, most things would be easy. Uh, but you tend to find that as you start to, got, start to get to other areas, the difficulty um, was then very relative as well. One of the areas that we considered very easy here was the installation of the product. And that was largely around the log files. Um, they've actually been augmented. They're a bit more verbose. And typically, as you start to look at the installation logs, you start to get a very good idea about when something might be wrong. It's not really about knowing that something is wrong or what is wrong, but it's about knowing that something may be wrong. And that's when you'd really start to start your investigative process. And this was really around a cyclic process. You'd wait to see if there was an issue. You'd then trace it. You'd try to understand it. You'd confirm that that issue occurred by trying to repeat it, and therefore you had a reproducible issue. The IP around this is really starting to grow now. We have the products that are, that are effectively released. Um, I think Brad announced that this morning as well. Yeah. So we're going to see a lot more content start to come to the fore. The forums and TechNet are certainly blooming with, with product-related IP but it's really around the scenarios, and we'll start to see that grow now as well. We use the, um, 
the Microsoft Solutions Framework as the base, as the, the IP development platform or framework for us, really, because um, it is relatively prescriptive, and that is how we deliver our engagements as well. And so the vision and scope documents that we've created um, as part of this offering really follow that framework, and so does the offering itself. I should probably, probably take a pause there and just define what an offering is. All right, so it, it's really about services engaging with customers and drawing on the experience of our consultants to build IP that is reusable by our organization, by our field, and to some extent, actually, out to partners as well. And we enable them to accelerate the deployment of a product or suite of products so that there is a very repeatable outcome and we deliver to the customer's requirements. <clears throat> so when I talk about an offering, that's really what I'm talking about. It's, it's a prepackaged set of intellectual property that has been developed by Microsoft Services. So in the moderate, moderate difficulty, if that's the way to describe it, um, physical consolidation, of course, means change. And when you're talking about systems management, it's kind of an insidious part of IT. It reaches out everywhere. So as you start to consider change, consider that there are cascading changes that need to occur. So dependent and depending services, networking, um, security, role-based access control, which I've got up here, which is, can you really get an administrator to agree to what role-based access control is? How is it defined within your specific organization? Who owns the definition of role-based access control? And can you get everybody that is involved in that process to agree to the level of access that they require? So it's about minimum, minimum rights, minimum privilege, right? And who really wants minimum privilege? Because by the very nature of being people, we tend to want a little bit more. So we need to try and address that. And that, that, that's really a, an envisioning and a discussion issue that you'll face within the organization as compared to it being a product-related challenge. In the difficult category, and this is largely around the dependencies on other parts of your infrastructure. So let me start around Pixie. The Pixie role does not exist as a discrete role within Configuration Manager today. Instead, it is built into the distribution point. So how do you really start to turn that off? How do you start to actually roll that out into your organization or migrate away from it if you choose to? PKI, of course, um, when you start to set this up and start to get dependencies, how do you migrate from one, from one level of testing to another? And we found that there was some challenge around that. The reason for actually going through these three levels of difficulty is that we've actually invested very heavily in developing IP in these areas so that we can alleviate the challenge, so that we can accelerate your time to deployment without really having to go through this, these, these really significant challenges in some instances. So, so real quick, so in that, so in the summary of all those components, the outcome of this is where we've engaged with customers, a lot of that starts becoming, we, we start having the ability to understand what's the right sizing around services, right? Are you a complex company? Are you a, a, an easy company? You know, is this net new or is this a migration? All these type of things, Part of what comes out of that in, into our offerings is, is a lot of recommendations. So, it, so it's not best practice more, it's recommended practices. And yeah. we're able to bring that to the table very quickly. And I think that's what's critical. As we start helping understand what customers are needing to do, when we start moving into role-based type deployments, how are other people, what we're able to collectively bring together is how other people are doing that all the time. So hopefully that'll help you guys. Yeah. And that leads you into it does. Thank you. So I guess the, one of our key focuses looking at, so our, our group has a number of offerings. And I think the position that the development team took on this was how do we make this as modular as possible? How do we ensure that it is tailored specifically to what a customer requires? That was one aspect. The other aspect to it was as we engage with customers, what we found and what customers are telling us is 
we really don't want multiple documents. We don't want volumes of documentation that we need to review, recycle, and then start to approve. Because ultimately, what happens to that artifact once it's signed off? So one of the goals of developing this IP was to minimize the actual number of documents, reduce the time to actually having something tangible to use, and ensure that it was sufficiently modular so that only the work that needs to be done is done. And the way that that was achieved was to look at a core design. So configuration manager, of course, requires a very core set of components that need to be developed. And that, was, that is the focus of the core design piece of the offering. We, if you consider configuration manager is really a, it has four or five capabilities built into it. And so if we take those capabilities, they're, they're really core features. And so we have feature guides. And where we've invested today is in operating system deployment, application software update management, forefront endpoint protection, and device management. So that set of IP exists today. There will be more that will start to come, uh, that will start to be developed. And I think um, the next one off the rank is compliance. Settings management, thank you. And as, as that starts to mature, we'll, we'll start to update the content in here. Of course, most customers would tend to have some existing product in there. And our, our base was, how do we help customers move from Configuration Manager 2007 to System Center 2012? And so we have developed some migration um, documents as well. So largely, the offering is structured in a modular way. There is a core component and optional components. The strategy for delivering this um, was really around a five-step process. So we go through an initiation phase, which is largely around um, setting up statements of work and engaging, having some pre-engagement um, pre questionnaires and teleconferences to be able to actually level set and understand um, and set expectations. We go through a requirements gathering phase around what is really expected. What, what do you really want from this, from this offering and what is your intent with Configuration Manager? Because we have this as a modular offering, what we can do as well is run a, effectively an engagement, I beg your pardon, a workshop that allows us to go through an envisioning phase. And each of the feature guides are then run as individual workshops. We generate a design as part of this and a functional specification, which will allow us to effectively accelerate a design and get to a POC. The POC is effectively addressing every one of the functional requirements that has been gathered. And we can then take this out to a pilot. Now, I believe that we're going up to about a 500 seat pilot with, with the design or with the guidance that we currently have. And it is then up to, the, to yourselves to scale that out to suit your organization. So this is really about how to get you to a point where you're self-sufficient and you can run the deployment project by yourself. So the modularity that we spoke about was really around those three major components, the core design, the migration, and the feature guides. And we have the envisioning component as well, which is really around how do we define what you really require from this offering. One of the key areas in that, I think, is the delivery assets. And what we tend to put out at this point is the vision and scope document. And we work with a functional specification. Now, we have, given that we've engaged with quite a few customers, have already started to populate functional specifications um, and, and requirements as well. And effectively, there's an accelerated process there. So we can work with you to workshop those requirements, work on whether they are valid for your organization or not. So some of those, some of the, in the vision workshops, one of the big things that we really find is engaging with the lines of business, engaging with your IT group, engaging with your business leaders, engaging with the users, and really doing the real discovery. Too many times that we find that most of the time when people do this, you, you, you got your IT department, well, they know how they want it, they build it, but at the end of the day, it's not necessarily driving what the customer is really needing. So these workshops are really critical 
and engaging with them and bringing the right resources to the table and having these conversations first to fully understand what the, what the real need of the company is. Mm -hmm. So they're, they, those, those components are very critical. It's not just follow a piece of paper and implement a yeah. you know, config manager. So. Yeah, it, it really is about definition around achieving that business objective. So like I mentioned, it was up to about a 500 seat pilot and we look at around 15 weeks to be able to run through the entire offering. And that, in, that is for all feature um, in, in, the, um, in the offering. I expect that as we add other feature guides, that time would perhaps increase. Um, alternatively, if there are, there's only a specific feature that you require, that time obviously is reduced. What I really wanted to draw your attention to on this slide is not, not just that it's five steps, um, but more importantly, we help you all the way through from step one through four. And that is really what the offering value is, is that we can get you from one through four within 15 weeks to then allow you to go to your full production deployment. So we, these five steps are really, or largely, the MSF model. And we've developed the intellectual property to be able to support you from phases one through four. And that's 15 weeks, like I said. So ultimately, we're more than happy to assist in that production deployment. It's if you choose to engage us, we're more than happy to. Alternatively, by that stage, we suspect that you would, you would have a pretty good idea of what your deployment plan is and how you would scale the infrastructure out. So just to talk about how the offering is really structured. Um, I know I've, I've sort of mentioned the modularity, but this is really around ultimately getting applications down to users and groups and satisfying their business requirement. The envisioning phase would, would largely define or help to level set around System Center 2012 and specifically with Configuration Manager. We would want to completely understand what business objectives we're trying to achieve because um, largely that will determine the success of this service. We develop the functional specification with you and then branch out into the feature guides. And what I really wanted to draw your attention to on this is that each feature guide is comprehensively documented. We go through some of the more, um, I guess, routine tasks. So if you look at operating system deployment, how do you import an image? How do you, how do you create a task sequence? And because we're prescriptive in that, we have a feature guide which delivers on three, three specific goals. It outlines, well, it addresses your functional specification. It is a build guide and will address how to actually build out that particular feature. And then talks about effectively the, the very common operational tasks that need to, be, um, need to be undertaken to be able to ensure that that particular feature operates, I guess, optimally. Now, it's not meant to be an exhaustive operations guide, but it is sufficient to be able to get you get you by through the, that pilot phase and then look at augmented um, operational assessments. Like I said, we've got four feature guides today and as we start to have more experience with the other features, we will start to develop IP around that. So the scope for, that, for the engagement um, through this is really around I think I've really covered this as more, more a summary of that, that process. And we really look to have good definition so that we can go through the engagement as quickly as possible. As features are, are removed, um, depending on your requirements, of course, we will start to reduce the time to deliver. And the migration planning, so actually the test lab. So the, the, the POC is really the test lab. And we will then start to look at what some of the other requirements are adapt the migration guide to be able to assist you in that migration process. Of course, the planning, there is limited scope on that. Um, it does depend on what your current implementation is. And I think largely we will look at perhaps um, a custom engagement to be able to support you if required. One of, the, one of the areas that we can help with in the pilot is to have very good definition on, on, the, on that scope. 
So how many locations, how many devices, where are the users, and what are their requirements as well. Configuration Manager as a, as a product will deliver whatever you ask it to. It's what do you want it to deliver and to whom. So there is an, an aspect, as Scott mentioned earlier on, around understanding what the user is, I beg your pardon, who the user is, and what their business objectives are. And that will determine the success of this service. So just to kind of recap on some of the things that we've covered, um, we have key challenges that we have discovered through our early adopter programs and that we've invested in to develop content to be able to help customers with their deployments today. We will deliver up to a 500 seat pilot um, with, four, uh, with all four feature guides or a subset thereof. The offering content itself is modular, so you're more than welcome to choose which features you require. And what we really want to do is make sure that there is a solid foundation set for the actual service itself. That modularity allows you to choose the components that are relevant to your service. And as we start to consider the consumerization piece and I guess following on the cloud trend, is to really look at each of these as a service. So software distribution becomes a service-based distribution effort. And that's really enabled by the capability of multiple products. So the modularity that we see today as we evolve our offerings as well, and as we evolve the service, is that largely it will become an aggregation of multiple products. I don't think we really articulate that today. We do it by way of the installation guide, which will tell you that you need SQL for this particular service or you require authorization or authentication for another service. But what we really should have ultimately is a service map, which will define that software distribution as a service has technical dependencies as well as operational dependencies and resources as well. And a key component here is that the success of the engagement that we, that we will deliver on is driven by that envisioning workshop. Ultimately, that is where we define what you require and how, I guess, what your expectations are. Because ultimately, if we don't meet the expectation, then there's a large, large measure, measure of uncertainty in success. So we need to have a very strong buy-in doing that envisioning workshop. And I think that's it. So this was really to, do, to let you know about what we can do to help with a configuration manager deployment and how we can accelerate that for you. We've done a fair bit of hard work uh, with our customers already and thanks to those early adopters we can now help you. Any questions? I believe the microphone up the front here may not be terribly good. So the other three uh, are probably better. How does an existing ConfigMan 2007 implementation impact the scope, time frame, and cost to get to pilot? So largely what we're about is defining, defining the Configuration Manager 2012 component. I think the migration piece will, will, determine, will be determined by the level of integration that you have with other products. Do you have third-party components that you've integrated into your 2007 environment? What is the complexity of it? How many sites do you have? And what's the level of, what, what services are you using within Config Manager 20, 2007 today? So if you're using just software distribution, that is very different to using all five services within 2007. Beg your pardon? So it, <laughs> I, I would hate to say it's the consumer consultancy answer, right, to say it depends. So but un unfortunately, it does. And sorry. So we're very flexible in those components. Yeah. I mean, really what you're looking at with that and the nature of that would be a side-by-side -side migration hmm. that you're looking at. And this week, if you haven't seen, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of content around those components. But we would be able to customize and modify accordingly to that. Yeah. And we would encourage just to bring that up in the first part of the components and we look at that so in the pilot you know we can we can stand up and get you guys to the first phase and then we can discuss what is the migration plan you know, well actually not to the pilot but to the PSC get the PSC up get you familiar with it seeing how 2012 is working and then we can discuss and actually doing side-by-side -side migration at that point and enable that as 
well. Yeah, Richard. Yes. So, right, right. Yeah. So, so to read, this is Richard Smith. And his point was that the designing phase of this is for the entire migration. Okay, the, the, the POC would be a simpler model, but the, uh, the design does encapsulate all of that out there yeah. for the end to end design for you. Yes. Your guides that you talk about, are they available outside of your offering? Are they something that, so like we're a Microsoft certified partner and I'm about to do it, my first SCCM 2012 installation mm -hmm. next week. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things I'm having trouble wrapping my head around are things like how to make the best uh, suggestion for hierarchy design and then, um, you know, a lot of the stuff uh, that sounds like it's in your feature guides would save me a ton of work and I'm just trying to figure out what I can leverage, of course, without hiring you. Right. <laughs> and, and, and right now, or this is MCS service at the moment while we still yeah. bake this out. Uh, and then as it's matured, it would be eventually released out to partners and stuff. But currently, right now, it's just internal to MCS for the yeah. moment. I wish I could say it was the other way around and accelerate you even more. But yeah, first, we, we really like to make sure the content's ready, and then we'll enable you guys yeah. as well. Up the back. Do you know if there's any plans for deployment planning services around System Center 2012, like there is for Exchange and SharePoint? Um, deployment we planning don't. services? Right. DDPS, yep. Yeah. Like EDPS and DDPS? Um, I heard rumors that there was. Oh. Have we have we done, done we, we've got Poovy back there who may be able to help yeah, us. Oh, there's Poovy. I think <laughs> I, just, I just want to address that question here on DP, DDP, DPS. Um, basically, right now, you don't have it, uh, but uh, there will be a funding program from a, from a product a point of view for POCs, mm -hmm. so you can use that for right now, and then we'll be having a DPS later. Any other questions for you guys? So I hope this, I hope this is helpful for you guys. Uh, I really think the big thing is understanding is that we really are moving away from just a computer object type yeah. management and we're really going to be more user centric. And I think that's, that's been an ask for a very, very long time. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're finding this is gonna be a, a really exciting time for all of us now. So I think it's gonna be really good. So thank you guys very much. Thank you for your time. Uh, we give you everybody after a wonderful day yesterday. So, and hope you all enjoyed the keynote. We'll talk to you later. Yeah.